Okay, today I'm going to show you how I make coffee using my Chemex coffee maker. If you saw my last video, you'll know that I have the Chemex 6 cup or CM6A model coffee maker. Now, one thing I noticed about the Chemex is it doesn't have any measuring lines or marks on the body of the coffee maker. So, you'd have to know how much water you're going to use for how many cups of coffee you're going to make. For comparison here, I have a Mr. Coffee automatic drift carafe and you'll see I have about six cups of water in there. So I'm just going to pour this in here to show you where this comes up to on the Chemex. You can see the water is clearly above the wood collar. And if we take a look in the coffee maker, you'll see that the water is really just about at the line of the collar. So I guess if you want to make less than six cups of coffee, you can measure out the water when you put it in your kettle. And then uh, when you boil it, you could simply just pour all the water in and then you'd know you'd have less than six cups. Or I guess you could learn how to eyeball it too. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that, but I have some water boiling on the stove. So I'm just going to empty the Chemex while I'm waiting for that water to boil. When I make the coffee here on the counter, I have a granite countertop, so I just put down this small cutting board to uh, insulate the bottom of the carafe from the countertop. Now while we're waiting for that water to boil, let me show you how to use the uh, Chemex coffee filter. So this is the square natural coffee filter. Now when you take it out of the box, it's folded over into squares, but you're going to put it in on an angle, and you're going to have three folds go to one side, and one fold go to the other side. So let me put that in the coffee maker. You just kind of stick it in there. And push it down till it opens up in a cone shape. Now I think I mentioned in an earlier video that you could also use number four cone filters with the Chemex. They do work. I thought I would just use cone filters because they're less expensive. But I found I really like this filter. It's a thick filter and one of the things that's really nice is that it has these two big flaps on the end and it makes it very easy to remove the coffee filter from the Chemex. I find with the cone filter which comes up to about the brim it's more difficult to remove it from the Chemex. Okay, I don't know if you can hear that, but the uh, kettle whistle is blowing, so the water is definitely boiling. Okay, that water is pretty hot. Now I'm going to start pouring the water in very slowly. Now supposedly first, you just want to get the coffee grounds wet and let that sit for a second. So that activates the ground coffee so it starts releasing the coffee oils and the coffee flavors. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Had a little splash with the kettle there. Maybe I filled it up too much. Now when you pour the hot water into the cone, the coffee starts to move to the outside of the filter. So what I usually do is run a little water around the rim of the inside of the cone to push the coffee back down together. There you can see how it's uh, kind of made a cone shape inside of the filter. So I usually just Pour the water around the edge and kind of try and fill that in. Now one of the downsides is that it does take a little while to make coffee this way. It's definitely longer than doing it in an automatic drip coffee maker. I've been making my coffee with the Chemex now for maybe just over a month and I think the coffee tastes a lot better. I'll add a little more water.
If you haven't measured out the water for the number of cups of coffee you're going to make when you put it in the kettle, and you're just doing it by eye, you really do need to keep track of how much water you've poured into the top of the coffee maker. Especially if you're going to use this to make less than six cups. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more water. I think that's going to be enough water now. It's just a matter of letting it finish. Looks like it's going to need a little bit more water. You can see the coffee line is just about here and we want to get it to the top of the collar. Okay, it looks like it's almost there. Maybe just add a tiny bit more water. You can see it's just getting close to the edge of the collar. Okay, so it looks like it's there. What I usually like to do is take the coffee filter out, let it rest in the sink so any excess or residual liquid drains into the sink so that uh, the grinds are not so wet when I throw them in the trash. So let me show you here. This is a really nice thing about the filter now. This is a very uh, heavy duty filter. So you can just take it, grab it by both ends, and I have a cup here just in case it drips. And then I can just take that to the sink and let it rest in the sink until it's a little drier. Now here's that glass top lid that I just got. I showed it to you in the previous video. This is a lid that will fit in the Chemex. Uh, when I first bought the Chemex, I didn't know they made these. I found out about it later. I should be able to just fit it right on the top here. And that'll keep your coffee warm. So having the lid is definitely a nice option. Now I edited this video to shorten it. It took maybe between six to eight minutes to make the pot of coffee. It's definitely longer and more effort than doing it in an automatic drip coffee maker, but I find the coffee tastes a lot better. Okay, I think that's it for this video. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching.